Welcome to the Original Gangsters podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. We're going to go back up to the Great White North and give you an update on what's going on in Canada with the war between the Rizzuto mob and the Hells Angels. More news. It's ever evolving, um, moving at a rapid clip as always. Some new reporting from us here at OG Pod, as well as a great investigative piece done by La Presse and um, Vincent LaRouche. Uh, on the control of the environmental trucking game right now uh, by the Hells Angels through a big trucking company called Value Sphere. This was this week uh, printed uh, or posted by the press talking about how uh, Value Sphere is losing access to all of their province contracts uh, through the, the province of Quebec because of ties to the Hells Angels. We'll get to that in a second. Um, from that, I was able to report that the overall construction racket right now, which has been a cash cow for both the Rizzuto mob and the Hells Angels for decades in a, in, in a, a racket that was always run in tandem. This is... A, a, a racket and a, a huge money-making space that, you know, kind of went up for grabs when the Hells Angels and the Rizzutos decided to go to war two years ago. And we're going to, we've been reporting here um, this week that based on every, everyone we spoke to, uh, getting some access to some uh, SQ intelligence briefings, talking to people in the SQ, talking to people on the ground, Right now, the Hells Angels have pretty much won this battle within the war of taking over the, you know, the construction industry uh, and taking it from the Rizzutos and essentially blocking the Rizzutos from doing a lot of their business in construction. And uh, it, it's been very deliberate, and it's a Marty Robert masterpiece again this guy can give a master class on how to build an empire how to extend an empire how to win a war how to um strategically and tactically eliminate your enemy's resources and and that's a lot of what this has been the last two years i'm told a uh, run point for marty in this endeavor uh is his right hand man stefan ploof uh aka fess and a man that really needs no introduction in Canada, one of the most feared and respected Hells Angels in all of Canada, Marvin Wume, who goes by the nickname Casper the Ghost, um, just got out of prison last year. And construction was his, you know, that was his, um, that was his bread and butter uh, in, in the 2000s, running point for the Hells Angels in their, in their uh, business dealings with, the Rizzutos in the construction trade. He got out. Uh, Marty put Fess uh, on, on the case. And the two of them, Fess got a head start because he was doing this for about a year before uh, when May came out. And they have essentially bracketed the construction industry where it's all their people that are giving out the contracts, getting the routes, um, getting the jobs. And a lot of business is being lost at the Rizzutos. It's bleeding their war chest, I'm told. Um, and this is very um, orchestrated and intentional. And then this you know, takes us over to what the press is, is reporting this week, that Valosphere, Valosphere which, um, which according to the reporting, you know, 70 75% of Val Valosphere's business is through city contract or province contracts. Um, and in, in this particular investigation, they were talking about um, contaminated soil hauling from construction sites to designated um, environmentally friendly landfills and garbage dumps and whatnot. And, um, this is a business that, according to the SQ, according to what's being reported by the press, is 
kind of think about the way that the, the casinos in Vegas, if we're going to make it an analogy to the U.S. Mafia, uh, where there would be guys that would own casinos, but they didn't really own the casino. They were just front men. So Valosphere is a $65 million a year business, um, holds all these contracts uh, through, through Quebec, uh, snow removal, um, a lot of uh, environmental hauling and whatnot. And a, a lot of like day-to-day -day infrastructure could be really disrupted if, if Valosphere is, um, if the situation isn't handled correctly by both the people that own Valosphere as well as uh, politicians and, and, and policymakers in Quebec. So the guy that, according to the SQ, runs Valosphere is a guy named uh, Louis-Pierre Lefortune, and he is a convicted criminal. He's considered a consultant, but according to the SQ and the press, he has day-to-day -day authority um, and that the owner, a guy named Goulet, is just, he's not, he's not there, according to this. He, he's, a, he's kind of a straw, a straw man. And um, La Fortune has direct ties to guess who? Casper Wimay. Um, They were arrested together in the 2000s. And we can now find a pretty direct tie, based on this reporting by the press, uh, between Plouffe, Fest Plouffe and Lil Fortune. Um, it looks like, or it doesn't look like, it's a fact that a former Hell's Angel by the name of uh, Stefan Menard, who goes by the nickname Teeny, um, left the Hell's Angels in 2013, took a job within Valosphere, and it looks like he is some type of go between for allegedly, but uh, for the Hell's Angels and the people that are running Valosphere, meaning La Fortune. So in June of 2023, this is right around the time that Chick Del Basso was murdered, um, leaving a meeting with, with Plouffe and, and Marty Robert in, in West Island. Around the same time, La, La Fortune is at a dinner with Menard, and sitting right next to them is Fess Plouffe. Uh, and SQ had observed a uh, Fess and Menard meeting earlier that day at a coffee shop. Uh, LaFortune wouldn't talk to the police. He denied knowing or didn't to somebody. I'm not sure if he wouldn't be interviewed by the police, but then at the same time, he was, um, I think he denied it to the paper that, that he knew um, Fess and that Fess just happened to be sitting next to him. And it was just a coincidence. Um, so, Another interesting, uh, notable point here within the Valosphere situation is that two of the guys that are involved in Valosphere, um, Tony Papa and Roberto Amato, are guys that have been indicted Hells Angels money launderers and guys that have had ties to, you know, the, the leadership in this. At one point, this tandem racket between Hells Angels and Rizzuto Mob um, are now back involved, but aren't answering to both of them anymore. They are just answering to the Hells Angels. And Amato was tied to Tony Suzuki, um, who was a, I know we got to keep a scorecard here. It's difficult to keep track. Uh, Antonio Petro Tantonio, uh, Pietro Tantonio, aka Tony Suzuki, was a drug and construction guy for Vito Rizzuto. He is now Team Hells Angels. Um, that was one of Amato's guys. And then um, uh, Amato and then uh, Tony Papa uh, is a guy that's been tied to um, Rizzuto's for a long time and is now answering to the Hells Angels. So it's, it's, it's just, um, it, it's a big, feather in the cap of the Hells Angels towards winning this overall war to take the construction space and essentially push the Rizzutos out. And you can see that um, within the Valosphere situation. So I just wanted to make everybody uh, aware of it. And then I also wanted to just finish up by talking about what we reported um, 
last week with uh, Tupac Atna making a switch from Team Hells Angels to Team Rizzuto's. And we've kind of found out some more uh, specifics on how that happened. And it was negotiated and engineered through Baldy Barbario, the street boss of the Rizzuto's right now. And uh, Baldy had had a working relationship with uh, Atna before he flip sides originally to the Hells Angels. Uh, Atna was working um, within the Greg Woolley Celestine organization, which was a subunit of the Rizzutos, had been working for Barbario and Eastside Marco Pizzi. Um, and then as we've talked about before, you know, your enemy's enemy is a friend, even if at one point they were your enemy. Uh, and Barbario engineered Atna's return to the fold here um, and, uh, you know, Atna is now leading the Rizzuto streaking operations. So that's our update from the great white North. I'm Scott Bernstein. Please like subscribe and share OG pod. We'll keep bringing you the underworld one story, one city at a time uncovering the underworld, um, in real time, Scott Bernstein, OG pod out.